Hey, how's it going today? I hope that you're doing good. I just want to get on here and share some scripture that I think is very important and just share, share a little testimony and just and just pray with you, of course. Uh, yeah, let me lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you today, Lord, just looking for your guidance as always, God. We know that you have great plans for us. We don't want to mess up what you have in store for us. So, Lord, just let us... Let us know what's, what's of you and what isn't. Give us that discernment, Lord. Give us wisdom in our decision-making, God, in every aspect of our life, in our living situation, in our relationships, in our jobs, uh, our finances, everything, God. Uh, give us direction in everything, God. We want your way, not ours. We know the enemy is trying to take us off of your perfect plan for our lives, your will, and we don't want to listen to him. We want to take every every thought captive and just um, what the enemy tries to lie to us and, and tells us this way it might be better. You know, sometimes it's faster. Uh, give us patience, Lord, to, to wait on you, Lord, for your answer. And we just thank you, God, for your spirit that lives in us, that guides us and comforts us and, and uh, reminds us how to handle everything. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just speak to us as we read your word. As I just speak, Lord. Uh, I know I can't mess up your word. Just, just fill in the blanks, God. Uh, that's going to help people. Uh, yeah, I just feel like I wanted to share something that's important that, that, um, that was recent for me. I told, I told you how, how I kind of fell back into scene and, I, I'm, and I, I'm, I'm out of that, you know. Well, I'm, I'm coming out of it. We're always sinning, but there's when you're just directly, uh, yeah, consciously trying to, you know, just sin it, you know, just decide to live that life for, for whatever reason. Um, yeah, yesterday I was out over at my mom's working. And I was picking up leaves, filled my whole back of my truck with leaves, but I noticed as I was doing it, uh, the leaves were falling right where I just cleaned up and uh, you know it's no, it's no big deal to me now but I remember when I was younger you know I would say things like you know when your parents would ask you to clean the room you'd be like why clean it you know it's just gonna get it's just gonna get dirty again you know or, or when I was younger as even as a even as an adult you know why you know why wash my car? It's just gonna get dirty again, you know? And then the other day I got my truck back and I was like, man, I need to clean up these these rims and tires, you know? If I could get these get these rims cleaned up and get some tire shine on this thing, it'll look good and it started to rain. And I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clean it up anyway. At least I'll be, I'll be clean. I'll be looking good for a, for a little bit. So I went ahead and you know, it took 10 or 15 minutes just to just to do that, and it felt good. And uh, but I was just thinking, sometimes it's like that with us with sin. You know, we're doing something. Um, for example, smoking. You know, I uh, I said in the last video how I was I was doing good yesterday. Well, it ended up I ended up uh, I had a few cigarettes left in my pack and. And uh, you know it's easy it's easier to quit when things are going good. But I was I was having a rough day, and I was just like I'm just gonna do it. I know I said on my video that I was done, and I I told all these people I went I went ahead and did it. But but uh, every time I would every time I light up a cigarette, I just ask the Lord for for deliverance. I don't want to do this, Lord. Change this desire, and you know I know that seems silly to most people that want to smoke why would you ask God to, to keep you from smoking you know and that's that's the only thing I enjoy I remember when I drank you know I was like I don't want to ask the Lord to remove that you know why that's the only thing that's the enjo only enjoyment I get in life but we ask him to change those desires and just come in and, and take care of that and we keep asking in the midst of our you know, in our sin you know why, why do I want to, you know, why would I want to pray for purity, you know, when I, when I, when I want to, you know, when I want to have sexual relations, but, but then God comes in and he changes those desires and he gives you your desires and then you're fully, 
fully satisfied when you're walking in His will, because that's the only way to to be satisfied is with Him. The only one that can satisfy the heart is the one that created it, and we were meant to give Him glory and praise and and walk according to to His command. So, so we just ask Him to line us up with what He's doing, His will. Uh, make us like You, Lord. Let us to love like You, and, and all those things. So. Um, I just want to encourage us to, to pray in the midst of our sin. I don't know what that is for you. I will say something rude to my mom with a bad tone and I'll immediately apologize to her and I'll tell the Lord I don't want to do that and I can see it getting better. Like with the smoking, I was doing that and finally the Lord said, okay, put it down and I put it down and there was no desire. And then I had a letdown like three days later and I went and had another one. He says, don't, don't take your freedom that I've given you and return to a yoke of slavery because you never know when God's going to give you that back again. Same way with drugs or alcohol or, or when he changes your desire for, for, for uh, you know, and your sexual habits or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I just want to encourage us to pray in the midst of that. Just we we already know this the you know the saying you know we don't we don't wait till we're cleaned up to come to Christ. He's the one that can do it, and that's that's so true. But I just I just wanted to talk about what that looks like. You know, when you're when you're lighting up a cigarette, Lord, I don't want to do this, and there's no there's no guilt or anything when I do that. You know, I remember. I remember one time I was high and I was out and about, I had my Jesus hat on. Because I'll go from one straight to the other, you know, it can happen like that, you know. And somebody was like, they were, they were, they were confused why I would be wearing the hat and, and using drugs, you know. And that is, that is kind of strange, I, I know, but, but, um, he's the only way out. He's the only way out of it. And, um. Yeah, I told you I was back in that, that that sin again, drinking and stuff. I remember I went and got a drink. I uh, went and got some beers and I was I was heading back home. And I prayed, I prayed, Lord, just lead me with your spirit. And the enemy instantly came in and he said, how are you gonna pray for the Lord to lead you with his spirit? And you're, and you're gonna go home and drink right now. And, and, uh, and he'll get you to, 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 that's the, that's the, that's his biggest lie, you know? And I just, I just rebuked him. I said, that's the only way we can change is if God's gonna give you his spirit in order to change. It's not by our willpower or our might that we're able to, to do those things, you know? <clears throat> it's, uh, don't tell me I forgot to put it on here. I did. I believe it's Philippians. Uh, maybe I can still copy. Maybe I can still paste it on here if I copied it. There it is. That is not it. Um, I think it's Philippians 2.13. It's God that's giving us the ability to do what pleases Him. It's His Spirit that allows us to change so we have to ask for you know we have to ask for that deliverance in the mid we can't do it with our own willpower and then ask God to come in it's it's his spirit that allows us uh, to change so we got to bring those out I think it's Philippians 2 13 but if not you can just look it up it's uh it's God giving us the ability to do what pleases him or it changes a little bit as you that's an NLT um, but uh, 1 John 1, 8 through 10, if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. You know, it's like a kid with a messy room saying, I don't have a messy room, you know, and you can see that it is. Or a kid saying, why clean that, you know, when I'm just going to get it dirty again? No, we can be clean. It felt good to get my rims clean for that time, you know. And when we bring that out, when we ask the Lord, he can take care of that. But if we don't bring it out, you know, if you're using meth or, you know, if you're drinking or having sex out of wedlock, we can ask the Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. Change that desire in me. I don't want to do that anymore. 
and he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, it's not like I didn't have to spend, I didn't have to spend 15 minutes on my rims like I did that day. All I have to do is bring it before the Lord. Lord, this is what I'm doing. I'm smoking. You, you already know this, but you want to hear it out of my mouth. You want to hear me ask you for help and confess it. Confess with your mouth. So that's what we got to do. Bring it out there. Whatever it is you're doing, do it. I remember uh, about three years ago, I was in the same position and before I had a really long stretch of, of sobriety. And I was, I would have to drink every morning and I drank before I went to church. And, uh, you know, and they could smell it on me. I know they could, but the church wanted to pray for me and, and they all laid hands on me. And it was, you know, and I remember one guy going, just keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, what's he talking about? I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting a beer as soon as we're done with this. But the Lord always pointed me back to that point when the elders of the church prayed for me. Like that was, that was a key moment. So we do, we do want to confess our sin. I didn't write that verse down, but yeah, we go to the elders and, and have them pray for us. Therefore, confess your sins to one another as another one and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. So I just pray, uh, or I ask you guys for prayer right now. Uh, all you righteous people out there, just pray that I wouldn't have any cravings, that when, when those weak moments come, that I wouldn't go to that uh, anymore. And I think that, you know, it's like that in any addiction, you know, if you can get past those first uh, couple couple days or whatever, you know, it gets it gets easier and we don't want to go to that. Mine's kind of a rebellion thing, I think, more than it is like trying to feel good because every time I do it, it doesn't help at all. Proverbs 28, 13, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledge my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. Salah. Yeah, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Whatever we're doing, just, just, just bring it out into the light. Uh, let the Lord, let the Lord fix that. A sin is, uh, so whoever knows the right thing to do, and fails to do it for him, it is sin. For it is a sin. So that's it. I'm. I just want to encourage us to bring that out. You know, even if God doesn't care. He already sees what you're doing. He would rather you just acknowledge it in front of Him. No, we can't get out of His sight. You know, so just just acknowledge it in the midst of your sin. If you're drinking, I don't want to drink anymore. If you're you know, if you're living with your boyfriend and girlfriend and you know that you're not supposed to, ask the Lord to, to lead you out of that to where you can do things uh, the way that he wants you to do them. And then he can re redo things. But yeah, we definitely want to not, not deliberately, not just sin and cover it up. Let's bring that up. And he'll, he's, a, he's gentle. He's a gentle surgeon. You know, he fixes. Well, yeah. He, he know, yeah, he's gentle with us. So, Lord, we thank you that, that uh, we can come to you and confess our sins and you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it's all because of your death on the cross, God, because you paid for every one of our sins. You just want a relationship with us, and that's good because that's what we want with you, Lord. So we just pray as we, as we draw near to you that you draw near to us, God. And we just pray for our loved ones that don't know you, God that you would just draw them in towards you too as well, that they would have a relationship with you. Our friends that don't know you, Lord, that you would just draw them in. We know, and uh, we love you, Jesus. Bless my friend right here in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, take care.